All right, guys, so I'm making some gel, um, some agaros gel to run my results from this matte PCR that I just did. Um, if anybody was on the live stream for uh, cordyceps matte PCR and cordyceps breeding, this, these are the samples that we did during the live stream. Um, so what I did to start this agarose is um, I weighed out 0.3 grams of agarose powder. Um, you can see this agros powder here uh, from mini PCR. Um, and I added 19 milliliters of uh, purified water and one milliliter of this uh, 20 times uh, Tris Borate. And I'm just gonna mix it up a little bit here and I'm gonna put it on this hot plate. And I'll just leave that there um, till it turns clear. Um, so instead of being all cloudy like this, it'll be clear like, like glass. Um, and I'll just mix it up to make sure I get all that uh, agarose off the sides when it gets hot. Um, but that should get hot pretty quickly. I already turned the heat on. It's at uh, 40, 50 degrees Celsius. So it shouldn't take that long to heat up and I'll get right back to you guys whenever that's ready to go. All right guys, so you can see now that the agarose is all clear like glass. Um, those are just little bubbles in there. It's not really grainy at all anymore. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, put it in this cast. After your gel is dissolved, um, let it cool down for about a minute and then add two microliters of a DNA gel stain. Um, this will help you to see your, uh, your results whenever you turn on the illuminator. Um, so I put these combs in here so there'll be wells uh, for me to put my PCR product. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and open that up. This goes a lot faster with a microwave. It's very hot. So we're just gonna pour that in there. Um, and I'm just gonna let that cool down and it'll solidify um, with the wells in it. And then I can take this cast out and I'll get back to you guys when we get that into the electrophoresis box. All right guys, once your gel is solid, um, you're going to want to gently pull the combs out So you don't break the gel. And then pull your cast out. It's a little stuck in there. go. You got some underneath, which is fine. Just pull that off. That's why I was stuck. It kind of suctioned on there. You can see now there's the wells in there. And then you're going to want to put that into your electrophoresis box. gel in the electrophoresis box you're going to want to put 28 and a half um, milliliters of water purified water and then one and a half mils of the 20x tbe and that'll be your running buffer eight three microliter droplets of your loading dye onto a strip of parafilm um, then we'll mix eight seven or eight uh, microliters of let's do seven and a half microliters of each of your PCR product. So I'm going to loosen up the PCR here and get it open. A little hard to do with one hand. All right, so the first four in here, I ran four samples uh, for mating type. So the first four in here are my four samples with the matte one primers, and then the sec second four are the same samples with the matte two primers. So for each of these droplets, I'm going to do um, the sample with the mat one and the same sample with mat two and so on and so forth um and then i'm going to put these next to each other in the wells so sample one mat one and two are going to be in the first two wells sample two mat one and two second two wells so on and so forth and then the last well i'm going to put my ladder um, so i can see how many base pairs everything is so my next step 
is to take seven and a half microliters of each PCR product and mix it with the three microliters of loading dye on the paraffin. All right, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you change out your pipette tip every time between touching anything um, to make sure you're not gonna cross contaminate and mess up your results. So I'm gonna put 8.5 microliters of the PCR product mixed with the loading gel into each of these. I hold it with my left hand just to make sure it's steady so it goes in the well. Um, you wanna make sure everything goes in the well. If it jumps out and goes into the other well, it again will mess up your results. And I don't press down all the way. I go to the first stop when I draw up and I go to the first stop when I put it in there just so that I don't get any bubbles. and gently put it in and pull it out so that you don't accidentally draw up some of the product into the running buffer or outside of the gel. The gel is heavier than the running buffer so it keeps the product in the well. And I already added the ladder in here beforehand. See now all of the wells are filled up with the PCR product and the last well has a uh, ladder in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and close the lid which has the electrodes on it so it can run the current through the gel. And I'm gonna go ahead and just turn this on. All right, the green light indicates that it's on. The current is now running through this. So I'm gonna check on this in like 10 minutes to see um, where my results are, if I have any results. Um, It'll, they'll be fluorescent whenever I turn this uh, backlight on and I'll uh, put this little cover over top so you can see what we got going on. Hey guys, so um, I've been letting this run for like 30 minutes. Um, put this little cover on so we can see it a little bit better and I'll turn this light off. And when we look in here, we'll, we'll see the ladder got a little bit messed up, which is okay. Um, but we'll see the first two wells were the first sample. Um, the first well was mat one, the second well was mat two. Um, so there's no result from the second well. That means that the first sample is mat one. Um, <clears throat> mat two has a little bit more base pairs than, or um, mat one has a little bit more base pairs than mat two. So it'll be a little bit higher up. Um, so for the second two wells, that's sample number two. Uh, the first well shows no result, the second well shows a result which means it's mat 2 and as you can see it's a little bit lower um, than the mat 1 which is in the first uh, set of samples um, so that's definitely mat 2 um, the third the third sample uh, would be the next two and it has results in mat 2 which is kind of faint um, but I can still see results and there's no results in the first well and then the last in the fourth sample, um, which is really hard to see. I was able to see it earlier and I got a good picture of it, um, but it has a result in mat two. Um, if the ladder was a little bit more extended, which unfortunately it's not, uh, you would see, you would be able to count the base pairs, um, but this is good enough results for me to have the answers uh, for my mating type ID. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and maybe I'll do another video on actually um, breeding out the, the cordyceps mushrooms. So we have our four um, single spore isolates here. And I can go ahead and say that this is mat uh, one, and then these three are mat two.
Um, so there we go. That's how you do mating type ID uh, via PCR and check your results via uh, gel electrophoresis.